So hi, hi, Micro Hunter here. This here is a microscope. It's a single lens microscope, uh, much like uh, the one that Anthony van Leeuwenhoek made a few hundred years ago. And in this video, I want to show you how I made uh, this uh, microscope. Um, as a matter of fact, how I made uh, this uh, lens here, um, which is actually not quite as difficult as one might imagine. It is like a very strong uh, magnifying glass and it is possible to see individual cells using this microscope. So I, I want to show this to you today. So we're going to start out uh, by making a glass lens, a little glass sphere. And you need a Bunsen burner and also a disposable pipette. Uh, this is a glass pipette. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a capillary, a glass capillary. And in order to do this, I hold the glass pipette into the flame um, towards the top because this is where the flame is the hottest. And uh, we see all that there's a color change in the flame and this actually shows that the place is right. So I'm going to show you the whole thing here now in real time. I'm not editing anything away. And already after a few seconds, you know, the glass pipette uh, starts uh, to melt. Um, it's possible to hold the pipette because the glass does not conduct the heat very well. Of course, I do feel the heat of the flame directly on my fingers, but the glass pipette itself does not become hot there where I hold it. I move away and I pull it apart with determination, but not too quickly. So I don't want to rip it apart. I break the glass capillary and this capillary is now going to be the basis for making a lens. And uh, how do I make the lens? Well, I, the lens will form on its own. I will simply hold the capillary into the flame and you can see that there is a small bead, a sphere forming. And uh, as the glass melts, it will pull together. And as the bead starts to grow, I'm slowly feeding in more and more glass. Uh, be careful, if you feed in the glass too quickly, then the droplet uh, is going to hang too low and it might actually fall down. And yeah, so all you have to do is you have to continually observe if the glass bead has the correct size. Yeah, and see after a few seconds, this is what I get. And I'm just going to repeat everything again. See, uh, now, out of first person point of view, you pull it apart, and then you have a glass tube. This is going to be now broken apart. It's kind of interesting how flexible glass can be when it's thin. Yeah, and then we basically start uh, making those little glass lenses. So you see the we let the glass form its own perfect uh, sphere here. Now, Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, who did that uh, many years ago, a few hundred years ago, maybe he was also doing this, um, or he was maybe also polishing lenses. Well, of course, here not every try is successful. If there's a little bit of air caught in there, then you'll get a bubble. Yeah, I tried to now uh, remove the little piece of glass that was uh, sticking out here by placing it directly into the flame. But I think maybe this little glass that's sticking out maybe can also be useful for mounting the lens and for putting some glue on it. The diameter of the lens was around three millimeters. And I said, okay, maybe that's gonna be an appropriate size. The, they were not perfectly round, I have to admit. Uh, some were a little bit uh, egg-shaped. Um, so this is a lot of trial and error. I, I designed the microscope the plastic part, uh, the lens holder, so to say, um, on my computer because I wanted to 3D print that. Now, most of you don't have a 3D printer, so you can use either some cardboard or maybe some kind of plastic card. Um, yeah, I just wanted to 3D print it and uh, here we go. And uh, it was not perfect either. I had to do a little bit of cleanup work as well. All of the holes were not perfectly round. Yeah, but that's basically after a couple of minutes this is what I got. Um, no focusing, um, Yeah, no pin to hold the specimen. And at the beginning, it didn't quite fit together, so I had to do some, some cleanup work as well. Yeah, so that is uh, basically simply the method I, that I used. I just want to show you some possibilities here, and it's then up to you. Yeah, the glass uh, lens goes in here, um, and then I'm closing uh, the microscope up, uh, and uh, it's time to give it a try. Um, and uh, it actually did work, okay? Um, so what I've done is, is I've placed uh, the microscope directly on the camera, um, of uh, my mobile phone. So the size and the diameter of the glass lens was appropriate for the camera um, as well. So this is also something that you might keep into considera in consideration. Yeah, so I'm gonna look at the leg of a honeybee, a uh, worker leg, and I, I placed the lens directly over the camera and I, I turned it around cover glass towards the lens um, because the focusing distance is, uh, the working distance is so short. And here we go, this is the claw of the honeybee. And uh, yeah, so it did work. A proof of concept did work. Quality was not so good. Yeah, but this is what I got here. But it kind of works. So I, yeah. So of course, I also had to try out some, some other specimens as well. 
And so I put uh, um, a small water sample that I had on my desk under the microscope. And look, this is what I see, paramecia, the single-celled uh, ciliates, single-celled organisms. And yeah, they were moving around happily. Now, in order to do that, what I did is I used them. Um, of course, I also had to flip the, the slide around with a cover glass towards uh, the lens. Um, and uh, I used very large cover glasses for that. Uh, so otherwise, you have the danger of water spilling out and it's going to be a mess. Um, but this actually worked yeah, reasonably well. Um, and what I found out as well is, is that the distance of my desk lamp that I used, this distance was really important uh, for determining image quality. So um, yeah, if you move it left or right, then the image uh, yeah, quality changes. Sometimes you see a double image, double picture, if you look very carefully here. Some of those paramecia, they have a slight double image as well, or a shadow. Um, so you have to also experiment a lot with the position of the lamp. And I found out that uh, if you move it further away the lamp, uh, then also the image quality improved a little bit, like here, slightly better, slightly more contrast. Yeah, see, if you move the lamp back and forth, you can also see that the image moves. So there are some whole bunch of rotifers also visible. And yeah, towards the left is a rotifer uh, crawling around. Yeah, so basically the proof of concept, it, it did work. Um, um, I think uh, one of the few things that we have to experiment now is, is uh, maybe changing the size of the diameter of the lens. Maybe this has an impact. Um, and also to make sure that uh, we really get a very nice round spherical shape. Um, and I don't know to what extent this is possible by melting uh, the glass, because as the glass cools, um, it starts to shrink. And this might cause some deformations. I think that's also quite a nice one here. Um, yeah, a rotifer again. And uh, yeah, two rotifers, a whole bunch of ciliates as well. So there is uh, quite a bit of uh, yeah, life <laughs> visible here um, on my microscope uh, slide here. Um, yeah, what shall I say? It's, not, it's, it's a nice proof of concept. It does work. And it gives a good basis uh, to actually build your own simple microscopes. And of course, I also had to benchmark the whole thing with the so-called fold scope. Some of you might actually know that the fold scope is um, also a single lens microscope, uh, that uh, a commercial one that can be bought. And I got a similar uh, image quality. The fold scope does allow for focusing, however, by bending the microscope. Uh, the fold scope is so-called a paper microscope, but actually it's not made of paper. It's actually made of pretty high quality plastic, thin plastic. Um, but the principle is pretty much the same. Um, and uh, it shows that uh, with a little bit of experimentation, you can probably also optimize the system a little bit more. Um, one of the things that, of course, is very notable by these single lens, with these single lens microscopes is, is that the, the corner, is, is when the center is sharp and the corner is kind of blurry because it's, it's, it's a sphere and therefore uh, there are a whole bunch of aberrations. Yeah. But I mean, you do see individual cells. Now, it's, I tried a permanent slide with uh, bacteria, with stained bacteria, but unfortunately, I was not able to resolve that. Okay, so this is kind of the slide that has high contrast stained bacteria, which should be visible. But uh, that was uh, really the resolution of this single lens microscope was not good enough. But this doesn't mean that they're not able to resolve that because uh, Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, who made the first uh, single lens microscopes like this a couple of hundred years ago, he was able to see bacteria. He was actually the first person who was able to see bacteria. So a couple of pictures. Uh, this is the cross section of a plant stem, tilia is the name of the plant. Here again, the, the claw of the honeybee. And uh, what is this here? Yeah, these are onion cells, also a commercial prepared slide. And you see it's, the image is not flat. And this is the cross section of a pine leaf. Yeah, it's Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's that's it uh, for right now. I thank you to all of my supporters. Uh, now it's your job, uh, so to say, <laughs> to improve the system a little bit and to experiment around. And maybe you can leave some comments if you're a little bit successful. Maybe you also have some advice uh, to some other viewers. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. And of course, see you around next time. Bye bye.